Hello everyone and welcome to the Playoff Edition Week 2, aka Week 14 edition of the Commissioner's Corner. Uh, as you can see, new surroundings here. Uh, this is actually Studio C. Uh, first time breaking it out because Studio A is way too cold to be in. Studio B is way too busy to be in as I have my children here as well as my wife making breakfast. Which smells delicious by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, last week, I mean, first of all... I apologize, this is a little bit different. Normally these happen on Tuesday or Wednesday, but because of scheduling conflicts, it was unable to be done Tuesday or Wednesday. And then also next year we had talked about, I don't know where my camera is here, I'm looking. Uh, we were talking about having these podcasts on Sunday anyway next year, because it gives a little more time, and then we can break down lineups and stuff. So this week we're going to kind of a test run to see how that will work. Uh, so yeah, um, it'll be a little bit different this week to say the least. <coughs> Last week we had some phenomenal performances, uh, so we had some crappy performances too, mainly my team and the team I was playing against, um, but uh, some teams are moving on, some teams are done for the year, we'll find out who's what, who's doing what, and here's we get it going. Alright, some teams are indeed moving up, um, some teams are moving out, uh, we have, uh, yeah... Some of the better teams have done just what we ever expected them to do, moved on. Uh, some teams that we didn't think we kind of stumbled into the playoffs, a.k.a. TDs and Beer, did surprise us and moved on to the next round. Some teams that stumbled into the playoffs, a.k.a. Dublin Drunks, sure enough, lost. Um, but when we look at the numbers, I mean, <sighs> scores in the 80s, scores in the 50s, high 50s, they were not good enough to move on. So, I mean... Hats off to uh, the Dublin Drunks, scored 71 points last week. A valiant effort. They lost to Beast Mode, who scored 86. Even better effort. Um, Nasty Nutria scored 57 points. Valiant effort. They lost to the Tallywhackers, who scored 82. And then finally, the Keizu Crazies, who had a great year. Um, they scored 80 points last, year, last week, and they lost to Troy Pulling Out on You, who scored 96. Um, I, any of you three teams had played... In our game, a.k.a. Providence versus William Shatnerface, you would have moved on to the next round because William Shatnerface scored an astounding 37 points and won, which is really sad. The only thing sadder than that is that he beat my team with 32 points. <clears throat> so let's look forward to the, today's games and break it down a little bit different here, okay? Um, we have, in game one, we have the number one overall seed, the Gambler, who had a bye last week, so we got to rest players. Um, he'll be playing off against the Tallywhackers, fresh off their 82-point performance last week. Things are all different. I'm drinking warm coffee instead of hot coffee, or iced coffee today, too. And uh, the advantage of doing these things on Sundays is you actually get to look and see. And I'm doing this in real time. I have not looked at these lineups at all, so it'll take me a minute to adjust. Look and see what the lineups look like, okay? So in this first game, we have the Tallywhackers versus the Gambler, okay? And the Tallywhackers, and we're going to break it down position by position. Nick Foles going up against the Lions, okay, which, you know, as a Lions, any Lions fan know, <laughs> can be a wild card to say the least. And then we got the Gambler, interestingly enough, is very confident, apparently, because he starts Ryan Fitzpatrick, not exactly the world's best start to begin with, who's going up against the Denver Broncos in Denver. I guess one side would be like, oh yeah, they're probably going to get smoked, so they have to throw a lot. The other side is, they're probably going to get smoked, this guy may be out of the game by the second quarter. Um... And if I had to pick a matchup winner on that, I would definitely pick Nick Foles, even though I am a Lions fan, okay? Um, so one, there'll be one point for Nick, for Tallywhackers, zero for Gambler. We break down to the next position, which is running backs. We have Andre Brown for the Gambler. He's going up against the Chargers in San Diego. And Steven Jackson for the Falcons going up against the Packers in Green Bay. I don't like either of these matchups, to be honest with you, um, but the Falcons are so bad. Even the Packers with like a 12th string quarterback should be able to smoke them. So I see the Falcons being down a lot that game. I don't see, I don't see Steven Jackson getting much going on there. Um, so I'm going to give that edge to the gambler based on Andre Brown. The next one we have Ben Tate. or so I'm going to start with the gambler first because out of respect he's the number one overall seed. DeMarco Murray for the gambler. It doesn't really matter who he's going against. Um, I don't even know who he's going against actually. Let me look here. Going against the Bears, okay, in Chicago. But the Bears aren't your father's Bears. They're pretty, they're reeling. Um, and that's on Monday night, too. Going to, 
the Tallywhackers have Ben Tate, who has already played against the Jaguars and could muster a whopping two points. So unless DeMarco Murray gets shot last Boy Scout style, he's going to win that category. So that's two for Gambler, one for the Tallywhackers. Wide receiver, we have Josh Gordon going off a record, two back-to-back -back record setting performances, I believe. Doesn't matter who he's going against. He just happens to be going against Riley Cooper. So a nice Nick Foles, Riley Cooper combination there, which could yield good results. But Josh Gordon is a beast. And I don't care. I'm giving that edge to Josh Gordon. I don't even have to see who he's playing because it doesn't matter. He's playing against the Patriots, looks like. Um, and then we have Calvin Johnson, who has not been played by the Gambler. That's crazy that you got the number one seed and haven't used Calvin Johnson yet. He's squaring off against Roddy White. We already know who those two teams are playing. Got to give the edge to Calvin Johnson there because, well, he is Calvin Johnson. Um, <clears throat> and then Jared Cook in the tight end spot, which is, you know, not really that important unless you have one of, like, three players. Jared Cook's not one of them because I had him on a real fantasy team. Jared Cook versus Ladarius Moore, or Green, sorry, Ladarius Green. This could go either way. Out of respect to the gambler, I'm giving it to Jared Cook. Kickers, Robbie Gould versus Grant o Grant, or Graham Gano. You know, I think Robbie Gould is statistically the world's most accurate kicker. Um, but I've heard that the weather is not going to be stellar there, and they're playing outside. Graham Gano, on the other hand, is playing a very crucial game against the Saints indoors. I'm going to give the edge to Graham Gano there. And then defense, we have the Chargers playing the, uh, the Giants at home. And then the Ravens for the Gambler uh, going up against... The... Who are they going against? Sorry, this is why I should prepare these things. But they, normally I'd be much more prepared, but it's been a rough week. Uh, the Ravens are playing the, jo or the Vikings in Baltimore. Clear-cut winner there. I'm giving it to the Gambler. Um, so, when you total it up, I have the Gambler winning six positions. I have Tallywhackers winning two positions. Gambler's going to move on. Sorry, Tallywhackers. It's been a hell of a year, though. And then the next week, the next game we have the Beast Mode versus the Sag Nasty Notch Above Top Notches, which is last year's runner-up. Um, they came in second place last year. Sag Nasty, starting Nick Foles, it's a very popular start because the Lions tend to give up a lot of yards over the year. Versus Tom Brady, who is playing the Browns. Oh my God, Tom Brady's been on a hot streak. <sighs> That's a tough call. That could go either way. If I had to err on the side of caution, though. I'm going to go with Tom Brady. He's been hot this year, this week, the last couple weeks, I show you. <clears throat> Nick Foles, they're playing at home. Philadelphia typically is not very good at home, although the Lions aren't very good on the road typically, either, so that kind of counts the other out. <clears throat> then we have, for Sag Nasty, we have Bobby Rainey, okay, who is, you know, the, the modern-day Doug Martin, if you will. He'll be playing, squaring off against Maurice Jones-Drew, who's already scored six points. Now, the Buccaneers are playing the Bills, who have a pretty Damn good run defense. I'm giving that edge since we know MJD, even though he, I don't think he scored a touchdown, he scored six points. We're giving that edge to MJD. And then we have Steven Jackson versus Steven Jackson. Obviously, that's a wash, and I don't think he'll perform well on either end. Um, Andre, or sorry, Torrey Smith for Sag Nasty versus Andre Johnson on Beast Mode. Torrey Smith, they are playing a lackluster Minnesota team who struggles against the pass. Um, Andre Johnson did score seven points without scoring a touchdown, which is really sick because that's a lot of yards. That being said, I'm predicting Torrey Smith gets in the end zone. I'm giving that edge to Sag Nasty. Then we have Keenan Allen for Sag Nasty, who is playing the Giants. You know, they're kind of wild card there. And then Alshon Jeffrey for the Bears playing against the Cowboys. Now, there's one thing I have learned from doing these, you know, once-a-week things. Is the Cowboys' pass defense isn't stellar. They gave up almost 300 yards per game. <clears throat> and Alshon Jeffrey just had 200 some yards himself last week. So, needless to say, Edge going to beast mode. Tight end. We have Jared Cook for Sag Nasty going against Jimmy Graham in an absolutely critical game against the Panthers for beast mode. Obviously, that Edge is going to Jimmy Graham, aka beast mode. The kickers. We have Justin Tucker Squaring off against the Vikings. He had a huge 17-point performance last week. The, no matter what year it is, the Ravens seem to have a kicker that it's like all they score is for them. You know, like, 
they it used to be uh, Matt Stover back in the day. He used to just score nothing but field goals, and that's how the the, the the Ravens would score nothing but field goals rather, and they would give him a win. Ryan Suckup, which is arguably the world's worst name, uh, he's going up against the Redskins in Washington. Got to give the edge to Justin Tucker on that one based on the 17 performance last week. And then finally, we have, for Sag Nasty, the Oakland Raiders playing the... Who the hell are they playing? Sorry, i got to do more research. Playing the New York Jets in New York. You never know, it's New York, anything can happen. And then the Arizona Cardinals, for Beast Mode, they are playing the St. Louis Rams in Arizona. Ugh. Those are... Hmm. I don't know. The Raiders, they let me down yesterday, last week, playing, uh, or maybe it was two weeks ago. Whenever it was, they played uh, the Cowboys. That was last week. Jeez, Thanksgiving was a long time ago. I gotta go with the Cardinals. So that would be five to two. My prediction is that Beast Mode will win that game and move on to the semifinals. Then in the next game, we have Troy pulling out on you versus Vic in the Box, the number two seed who had a bye last week. So he has a fresh round of players. Cam Newton playing the Saints in New Orleans. Big game, big prime time. Superman enters the Superdome as Monday Night Football is... Uh, or Sunday Night Football is promoting it. Sunday Night Game, must-watch TV, must-see TV. No Walking Dead this, this week, so uh, Seagrass Household will be tuned in live for this one. <clears throat> Actually, we tune in live every week. We catch up on The Walking Dead during halftime. So, Cam Newton versus them. Tom Brady versus the Browns. Monumental clash of the Titans here. I gotta go with Cam though. He's hot. He was on my fantasy team. He's playing him. I mean, he's gonna show the world what's up. I hope tonight. <clears throat> Fred Jackson of the Bills for Vic in the Box playing in Tampa Bay, who's you know kind of terrible. Uh, versus Bobby Rainey of the Buccaneers playing the Bills, who have a good run defense. Gotta go edge Fred Jackson there. So that's Vic in the Box two, Troy zero. Oh, man, you talk about a matchup here. I don't know how these people have not used these. By the way, Vic in the Box, I'm going to run their lineup down here. Frazier had warned me that the dude hadn't used anybody, and I believe him now because I'm looking at this lineup as I'm going down. A little teaser there. Vic in the Box starting LaShawn McCoy versus the Lions, who, quite honestly, have a pretty good rush defense. Uh, <clears throat> but he is still LaShawn McCoy, who is, you know, top three pick overall in most leagues. He's going up against the one, the only beast mode, not the team, the player, Marshawn Lynch. Clash of the Titans there as well. This is a big game. Big name players in this game. Except for Bobby Rainey. Uh, Marshawn Lynch playing in the Superdome against the, the, ah, man, the Saints. And keep in mind, the reason he's named beast mode is because of the Saints and the greatest run of all time. Google it. Uh, Marshawn Lynch Saints playoffs, and you will see probably the greatest run you will ever witness in NFL history. Um, that being said, <clears throat> man, that's a tough one. I'm going with the Lions defense here. I'm giving that edge to Marshawn Lynch against the Saints. After, I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, hold on. Marshawn Lynch, I'm sorry. They played the Saints last week. Who the hell are the Seahawks playing this week? That was all for nothing. They're playing the 49ers. My God, I'm, this is why you don't do these things first thing in the morning. That changes everything. That changes everything, man. Uh, forget about Googling it, because you're going to find out that that's not even the matchup this week. Marshall Lynch playing the 49ers in San Francisco is a completely different matchup. So uh, I'm going with LaShawn McCoy, unfortunately, for Troy pulling out on you. Next, Vic in the Box has Josh Gordon. That's all I'm saying. We already talked about him. And Andre Johnson, we already talked about him going for Troy. Josh Gordon going against the Patriots. I, mean, I gotta give it to Vic. I'm sorry. Josh Gordon's a man possessed. And then he also has Elshon Jeffrey going up against Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, we've already talked about this. Elshon Jeffrey getting the point. And then we have Rob Gronkowski. This is Vic in the box. I'm telling you, this lineup is a super lineup. Versus Kobe Fleener. I don't care who Kobe Fleener's playing. He could be playing the Addison Panthers, and I'm still going Gronkowski. They have Ryan Suckup versus Adam Vinatieri. 
Adam Vinatieri is playing the Bengals in Saint or uh, Cincinnati. God, I'm all messed up. Like, dementia, I swear. Um, you know what? It's a kicker. I'm giving Troy a point for that one because that's gonna be a that's gonna be a good game. And finally, the 49ers playing at home against the Seahawks for Vic in a Box. Cardinals playing on the road. Oh no, at home against the, the Rams. Mm. I'm giving the edge of the Cardinals on that one. So when you total it up, we have six points for Vic in the Box, two points for Troy pulling out of you. I'm present, prevent, uh, predicting that Vic in the Box will win this game. Now, when you look at this lineup from top to bottom, this is no joke. This is a playoff lineup. We have a chance, much like the greatest score of all time was last week, last year in the playoffs in this round. 118 points, I think it was. Vic in the Box lineup from top to bottom. Cam Newton, Fred Jackson, LaShawn McCoy, Josh Gordon, Alshon Jeffrey, Rob Gonkowski, Ryan Suckup, and San Francisco 49ers. I do not want to be playing that. So, needless to say, I'm predicting a win for uh, Vic in the Box. Frazier was right, at least so far. And then we have the battle of my old two chums. William Shatner face, fresh off his 37-point awesomeness, versus TDs and Beer, who was reeling, but he scored 66 points last week. So he would have beaten him last week, and he may beat him this week. Let's do the matchups. <coughs> Alex Smith of the Chiefs playing against the worst, well, second-worst rated Redskins defense, pass defense. Peyton Manning, doesn't matter who he's playing, really. Although he is playing uh, the Titans. Okay, William Shatner face has Peyton Manning, we're giving him the edge. Next we have Ben Tate in his two-point performance versus Eddie Lacy against the Falcons. We already know Ben Tate scored two points, I'm giving the edge to Eddie Lacy because I think he'll score more than two. MJD with six points already for TDs and Beer, going up against Steven Jackson. Oh, wow, they're playing each other. Isn't that something? Steven Jackson and Eddie Lacy, both on William Shatner face. Same game. What if he has direct ticket or Sunday ticket and he can watch it and just masturbate the entire time? Uh, MJD, six points. Steven Jackson, I don't think he's going to do anything. We're giving the point to TDs and Beer, his first point on the board. And then we have another matchup that I've already given out. This is the exact same matchup as, uh, what game was that? Beast mode? No. Okay, it wasn't the exact same matchup, never mind. We have Torrey Smith, Baltimore, facing the Vikings versus Riley Cooper. I'm predicting Torrey Smith to get in the end zone. I've already said it. That's a point for TDs and beer. Eric Decker, fresh off his record-setting performance, even though nobody started him last week, versus Larry Fitzgerald. You know what? I'm doing, I'm doing the unthinkable here. I'm giving the edge to Larry Fitzgerald. I don't think Decker's got it in him to do it two weeks in a row. They're going to be covering him like stink on shit. Uh, <clears throat> and then tight ends, we have Jared Cook. Jared Cook's a very popular start this week. Jared Cook for TDs and Beer. Tony Gonzalez for William Shatner face. I'm giving the edge of Tony because they're going to be behind the entire game. Place kicker, Sean Swisham versus Adam Vinatieri. Hmm. Yeah. If I had to pick on that one, I'd go Vinatieri. And then defenses, the Bengals versus those Colts, and the Raiders. What is up with people starting the Raiders? What is going on here? Well, I guess they're playing the Jets. That's what's up. Uh, the Colts are reeling. I'm going to give that point to the Bengals. But it doesn't matter because TDs and Beer will, according to my predictions, lose this week to William Shatner face, which pains me greatly to say, obviously. But you know what? If I lose, I want to lose to the champ. So I'm pulling for Eric Perez to win it all. So, according to James's predictions here, which is, you know, kind of a bullshit thing, but uh, <clears throat> that would mean that Gambler Beast Mode would be in the semifinals playing each other next week, and then Vic in the Box and William Shatner face would be the other semifinal game next week. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, I think... I think these are reasonable predictions. I think that all the teams that are left are good. I mean, even William Shatner face, who had a stinker of a week last week. That's what it takes. That's what it takes in this league. If you can win when you disappoint yourself, then I think you're okay. Uh, because, I mean, he didn't really use too many players last week. And he certainly didn't score too many points last week. But it got him enough to win. So that could propel him. Unfortunately, he's playing against, you know... Well, he's going to play, if he wins, he's going to play against Vic in the Box, who seems to be the odds-on favorite. Vegas odds are dead even on this guy. 
Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Well, I know it's a little bit different podcast. Maybe not as entertaining as the other ones, but hey, you know what? It's the playoffs. I don't got a lot to talk about. There's only eight teams left. Who will make it to the final four? We'll find out this week. Uh, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace.